simpleprogrammer.com and uh, I, I just came back from a timeshare presentation here in Hawaii. Uh, I, I occasionally go to these things uh, to get the, the free the free thing that they're giving away. I know it's not really really worth my time but uh, it's kind of fun to do the math and I hadn't been to one in a while and you know I was at this snorkeling place and they gave me this really good deal. I was like, eh, might as well. They have childcare. So. Um, but anyway, I thought it would be interesting to do a video talking about why timeshares are not a good idea and why they're not a good deal. So sorry if you've already bought a timeshare. Uh, you're probably not going to like what I have to say, but you, if you're honest with yourself, you probably figured this out. So yeah, I've, I mean, I've been to probably seven or eight of these presentations. No, not that I do it for a hobby, but over the last, let's say, you know, 10 years or so. And uh, and I've always run the numbers. Like, I, I've taken it seriously. Like, I've, you know, said, okay, if you can show me a good deal, obviously I, I would buy this. I'm not just going to be closed-minded. And uh, while the resorts look nice and the idea seems really nice and the way that they pitch it, um, when it comes down to the, the raw numbers, it just doesn't make sense. So let me give you an example. So I'll give you an example of the one that I went to today. So I think it was like the Diamond Beach Club or whatever. And basically they have, you know, like 333 resorts. And, you know, they get you in this room and talk about all that. But then when it comes down to it, it's it basically comes down to this point system, right? So let's say they have, they have 7,500 points, which essentially uh, gets you like two weeks somewhere, you know, pretty much. Not, not at the most fancy room or, or place, but, you know, for like a two weeks in a one or two bedroom, uh, you know, place in, in one of their resorts, uh, not at high season, one week in a nice, super nice place, right? So they're basically selling you these points, that's their kind of minimum entries, these 7,500 points. And, uh, and that seems like a pretty good deal, right? When they give you the numbers, uh, they want you to pay for this. Uh, and so I got offered, I think it was like, 30, about thirty thousand, twenty nine thousand dollars for the seventy five hundred dollars, seventy five hundred points that you get every year. You can exchange it, you know, all this. But essentially, it comes down to two weeks vacation uh, for you know one time payment of thirty thousand dollars. Now, up front, that seems like a pretty good deal, right? That seems I would do that, right? If that was all that it was, they paid thirty thousand dollars once, have a semi pretty guaranteed, you know, two weeks a year at all these different resorts around the world, uh, I would definitely do that. But that's not uh, what the deal is. See, here's the thing that, that, that kills the deal. And this is, this is how timeshare companies make their money and, and what, uh, what makes this entire thing a ripoff, which is that uh, there's a maintenance fee on those points uh, for your property you know, of $1,600 a year. At least that's what they, they quoted me on this, right? And they say it's taxes and insurance, but it's, it's definitely more than that, right? So in order to, so essentially, like if you just looked at the numbers, right, you would basically be paying, uh, you, after you've paid your you know, $30,000 or whatever for your points, you'd be paying $1,600 a year for two weeks to stay somewhere. Now that's decent, right? I mean, you can stay uh, at one of their nice, you know, resorts for for sixteen hundred dollars uh, for two weeks. That's that's a pretty good deal. Like it's it's not a horrible, you know, it's not not a horrible deal. But remember, you're not just paying that; you're paying the extra thirty thousand dollars on top of that. And if you're staying in for longer periods of time, or if you find a condo to rent on your own, which could be nicer than their place, or at least bigger, right, you can probably pay less than that. Plus those maintenance fees can go up over time. So when you run the numbers, right, just from looking at it from that perspective, what ends up happening is, uh, you know, basically what I ended up telling them today was, hey, look, if you gave me the points, the 7,500 points, for totally free and just had me pay the maintenance fees, I would tell you no, right? And it's because I don't want to pay $1,600 for two weeks, uh, you know, a, a year that is that is dependent on when I book it and could be booked up and, and all this and g going through their system and could go up over time. And that's because, you know, for example, the place that I'm renting in, in Maui, right, uh, I'm renting it for two months, I'm paying $2,200 a month, which is a lot less than 1600 for two weeks. It's a two-bedroom condo, you know, I can walk to the beach from here. So, I mean, there's definitely 
deals that you can find if you if you look at vacation rentals by owner and things like that that are better now obviously compared to staying in a hotel a timeshare you know is going to be better than that but remember you're not just paying the sixteen hundred dollars a year you're paying the thirty thousand dollars so it, that's sort of like one way to kind of shoot the the argument and, and to to look at it um, but the other way, uh, you know, just looking at the points, right? Uh, just the, the, the amount of money you're spending on the points, is you can look at if you invested that money. So, let's say you know, for this example, they're telling me thirty thousand dollars for seventy five hundred points, which is like uh, uh, two weeks vacation. So let's let's say that I bought uh, three times that amount, uh, enough points to go for six weeks vacation a year. Or basically, you know, ninety thousand. Let's let's say a hundred thousand dollar investment, right? Just to make it a round number. Well, if I bought, let's say, a rental property for a hundred thousand dollars, right? Again, to use a round number, the minimum return that I'm going to expect on that rental property is around ten percent. This is from having multiple rental properties. I can tell you that if you paid something cash, hundred thousand dollars, you can probably find something if you find a good deal where it's going to return you about ten grand a year. Uh, from from that profit, and I mean we could even cut that number. When I say profit, I guess it's really gross, right? Because you might be able to find something for a hundred thousand that you could rent for a thousand a month. Th those those things do exist out there. But let's say that you maybe make uh, you know eight hundred dollars. Let's say eight thousand dollars a year, right? So can you vacation somewhere, right, for six weeks a, a year, every year, for eight thousand dollars? Let's say it's even seven or six thousand dollars from your rental property. Let's say six thousand to be extremely conservative, right? Uh, that's two thousand uh, uh, dollars, or actually it's, it's six weeks. So can you do six weeks for six thousand dollars? Well, I'm doing it here easily. More, you know, uh, but even if you stay in a hotel, you're going to be able to do that, and that's not including the maintenance fee. Again, if you tack the maintenance fee on top of there, right? So that sixteen hundred dollars a month, and you have to knock that off of there. So basically, when you look at it, it's never a good deal, right? The, the way that these timeshare companies make money is they make it totally off of the maintenance fee, or well, the maintenance fee covers the cost of the the property, right? It covers everything to to maintain it to, uh, and to to build their their properties, and then they make money. Everything that they make from the from what you pay for the points, or, you know, the ownership, the shared ownership, is total, pretty much profit at this point. I mean, they got to pay their salespeople their commissions, but anything that they can sell, it's it's pretty much profit, right? Uh, so, so that's the thing is, it's not really a good deal. Like you're better off, because they always use this comparison. They're like, well, you're going to spend this money vacationing anyway, right? So they say, well, how much did your hotel room cost? And you know, and they come up with some number and they show how you're you're just throwing away thousands of dollars every uh, every year uh, for a vacation that you're going to take anyway. You're going to take your two-week vacation, right? And your two-week vacation might cost you like four or five thousand dollars. I, I don't know. I mean, it depends on. But they show how you're throwing that money away, and if you just spend this one-time investment in, you know, for thirty thousand dollars, then you're going to be saving that money every year. Well, again, if you look at the maintenance fee, and that's the clincher, uh, it, it, the maintenance fee is the problem. That's what ends up costing you money, and that can go up over time. Plus, you know, there's stability. You, you, when you own a timeshare, uh, you don't know how long they're going to stay in business, how many resorts they're going to build, you know, how booked up it's going to be. I mean, you know, it 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 looks really good when they when they present it that way. That's why they sell so many. But anytime you're in the high pressure sales uh, situation, you need to push back and you need to really run the numbers. I, anytime someone is going to tell you that you have to do something now, right? Um, you you got to think about it. It 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 doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a good deal, but more than likely, a high pressure sales tactic, like a extremely high pressure sales tactic. Is uh, is is going to point to something bad. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use limited uh, availability. I mean, I use that on my course. I say that it's a I put a sale and it's only available for a certain amount of time. But it's not a high pressure like sales environment like these like these timeshare sales. Anyway, so that's my lowdown on on the timeshares. I thought I'd do a video because I just came back from one and I had these thoughts kind of in my mind. 
and I, you know this is a video so I'm not running the exact numbers but you could run the numbers like I just encourage you to go and look and and figure out what the numbers would be like if you bought a rental property or invested in some other way and use that return on the asset and then uh, and compare it especially to the risk of you don't know what's going to happen a lot of timeshare companies eventually go under right and uh, and their point systems you know obviously if they go bankrupt it's 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 worth nothing at that point uh, it's it's a risky thing to do uh, not not quite a, a smart thing go attend the presentation get um, uh, you know for a financial exercise run through the numbers yourself and get get free stuff for doing it but uh, but yeah I really recommend against buying them because it just doesn't make sense if you did want to buy let's uh, you know because I have considered if you did want to buy timeshare like a, a point system like that there's a secondary market for it where you can buy them from people that are trying to sell them and uh, and that would be obviously a better discount than what they're going to offer you at one of these presentations so that would be the way that I would go if I were going to do it but you're much better off taking the money that you would invest in that investing it in something that's going to return you uh, a tangible money that, and then use that money to vacation like I said if you bought a rental property or something like that, you could definitely find a better investment opportunity. Because when it comes down to it, it's all you know, apples to apples is you're basically investing to get points in their system to use to spend on vacation. It's better to invest in something else to get money, actual money that you could spend on whatever you wanted, not just uh, not just what's in their system. Nope, well, that's it for this video. It's gone on a little bit long. If you have any questions or if you have any find any flaws in my logic, if you think that they're there is a case where it does make sense to buy timeshare. I'd be curious to hear about that because I've been, like I said, I've been through these numbers a lot and to me, like I said, if it was a good deal, I would totally do it. But it's pretty much almost always a rip-off. And, uh, you know, the fact that they're giving away so much free stuff and that they're it's such a high-pressure sales situation should kind of trigger that for you. But, uh, but yeah, that's it for, uh, for this video. Uh, take care. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you uh, if you like these kind of videos. Take care.